aquí en esta edición especial de Auto 060. Yo soy Javier Mota. Recuerden que toda la información que estamos eh, brindando hoy aquí en este show especial sobre New York está en nuestra página de Facebook, facebook.com slash auto 060. También me pueden seguir en Twitter, arroba Javier Mota. También en todos los videos en YouTube hemos colocado más de 10 videos del Auto Show de Nueva York, así que está toda la información ahí. Y bueno, hablamos con John McCorney, que es uno de los eh, directivos del eh, comité el, el premio al auto mundial del año y ahora vamos a hablar con dos de los ganadores el principal premio fue otra vez como dijimos para la Volkswagen el año pasado ya había ganado con el Volkswagen Up un auto micro compacto que no se vende todavía acá en Estados Unidos y este año es la séptima generación del Volkswagen Golf eh, Volkswagen Golf 2015 que es un poco confuso por eso tuve incluso la duda ahí en ese momento eh, este es un auto que ya se presentó en el auto show de eh, Ginebra el año pasado, este año y ahora de espera se presentó acá en Nueva York y bueno, saldrá la producción para la primavera del 2014 así que vamos a hablar con Mark Giles de la Volkswagen con el, quien nos va a dar algunos detalles más de esta séptima generación del Volkswagen Golf que es fabricado nada menos que en la fábrica de Puebla en México Congratulations to the whole Volkswagen Group again, second year in a row World Car of the Year, that's pretty amazing Yeah, we're really pleased with it, you know uh, Golf's a really terrific car um, brand new car built on new architecture but I think it's, you know it's one of the, the best selling cars in the world and, and, and rightly so and you know, we're really pleased that we got this award to back up the Car, European Car of the Year that we received in Geneva. Yeah, and uh, last year here you won the, with the Up, which is not uh, for selling the US, but it's uh, another fantastic car, right? Yeah, the Up's a really nice car, but unfortunately, you know, it's not it's not engineered for the, for yeah, the, US. For the US. And it's, we think it's probably a little bit small for, for this market. Um, the Golf, on the other hand, um, will be coming to market first half of next year in the United States, bringing it in with three different engines. Um, Including diesel? Yeah, there'll be a new 2-litre diesel engine uh, making 150 horsepower. We'll have a 1.8-litre direct injection turbocharged engine as, as the base engine, yeah. making 170 horsepower. And then the, the GTI gets the 2-litre uh, turbocharged yeah, engine. And, um, so this is the seventh generation Golf. Uh, and this car is gonna, you're expanding your uh, plant in Puebla, in Mexico, to build this one there, right? That's correct, yeah, this is seventh generation, and uh, Puebla is being equipped to be uh, a site for the new, the new architecture, uh, which we call the uh, modular transverse matrix, um, and there'll be a new, f new line going in at, at Puebla, um, and to produce this car for the whole North American area. Okay, so this car is going to be exported from Mexico to uh, U.S. and Canada, and then uh, I, mean, I guess that you build it somewhere else, right? In the world, I mean, it's a global car. It's a global car. I mean, it gets built. Uh, the, currently, it's being built in uh, Wolfsburg in Germany, um, but um, it, it is a global car, and I'm, I'm assuming it's built in China as well. So. Well, that's amazing. So, um, two years in a row. Do you have something for the third year in a row? <laughs> um, yeah, actually. <laughs> I, I, I don't know whether the XL1 qualifies because it's limited. Yeah, you know that's a pretty. Amazing well, green, green car of the year, maybe. Yeah, I mean, it, well, it could be. It could be world car of the year. Yeah. Hopefully, yeah. Well, congratulations again to the Volkswagen Group, and I can't wait to drive it because it, you said it's coming in the summer, right? Uh, it, yeah, next year, mate. Yeah. Next year, 2014. Yeah. Oh wow, we have to wait a little. Yeah, bit. No, and for the Golf, I mean. The Golf is coming for 2000, oh, because it's at 2015. Yes, that's correct. Oh my, where does time go now? It's <laughs> 2013, 14, 15. Okay, anyways, I can't wait to drive it anyway. Good. Well, thanks. Good. Thank you, Max. Y bueno, del Volkswagen Golf, ahora pasamos a otra marca del Grupo Volkswagen, el grupo alemán que está tratando de convertirse en el fabricante número uno de autos en todo el mundo. Y vamos con la Porsche, que también repitió en los premios al auto mundial del año este año. Eh, había ganado con el 911 como el mejor auto en general eh, en el año 2012 y ahora en 2013 ha ganado con el Boxster y el Cayman. Así que vamos a hablar con Nick Tework de la Porsche North America. So Nick, congratulations uh, for two special reasons here. Well, three actually. 50 years of the 911, the new introduction of the 911 GT3, and a pretty big award for Porsche this year. For the second time. Uh, in a row. Yeah, it's been a really uh, great week for us here at the New York Auto Show. Uh, as you mentioned, it's the 50th anniversary of the 9-11, so opportunity for us to kick that off and also uh, reveal the 
911 GT3 for the first time in North America. Yeah, very special car. Huh? Yeah, it really is. It's uh, the sportiest 911 model, and uh, it's it's definitely the most fun one to drive. Well, all of them are fun to drive, but this one is special because it has a special uh, engine, suspension, everything. Can you tell, talk a little bit about that? Yeah, we kind of took the 911 and turned it up to 12 with the GT3. Um, this car has obviously got completely revised suspension with uh, lighter weight wheels and tires, uh, completely new geometry. Uh, the real highlight is the engine, though. It's a 3.8 liter uh, flat six based on the same engine as uh, what's in the 991 Carrera S. But in this case, uh, it actually revs to 9,000 RPMs. So, 9,000 long. Yeah, that really actually defines the character of the car, I would yeah. say. Um, so obviously with that sort of uh, high revving capability, uh, it's a very emotional car to drive. And that's uh, not the magic because there's a lot of work behind it, but like the, the thing with Porsche engines, they're not necessarily the biggest ones, but they're always like the most efficient in delivering the power to the car, right? Yeah, and in this case it makes 475 uh, peak horsepower, which is uh, nothing to sneeze at, but certainly not the highest in the industry, but the combination of that kind yeah. of power with this lightweight of a vehicle uh, really makes for the performance combination. Is this a limited uh, uh, production car? I mean, like, you don't build that many of these, right? No, the GT3 is always a limited model. I mean, we'll build what the market demand is, but uh, generally speaking, it's it's uh, well under 10% of 911 sales. Yeah. So uh, 50 years from the 911, you're celebrating the, through the whole year around the world. Yeah, this is really cool. Of course, the original 911 debuted in Frankfurt in 1963. So uh, 50 years later, we're kind of celebrating the whole year long and not waiting for the Frankfurt show. But actually, um, the 911 made its debut in America at the New York Auto Show um, in 1964. Um, but still, we didn't want to lose the occasion here in yeah. celebrating it. Too bad it wasn't uh, for the award this year. It would have been like so cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It won last year. Yeah, obviously we won the, the Performance Car of the Year from the World Car of the Year jury. Uh, this year for the, the second year in a row. I think actually it's been since the inception of the award we've won several Three, times. I think. I think the Cayman won uh, when it came out. First for, I don't know, design or performance. Yeah. Uh, but now the new the new Cayman won this year, like Boxer Cayman, because uh, it's based on the same platform, right? Yeah. No, it's very exciting. It was uh, really capped off the morning for us, for sure. And uh, it's, it's a great honor to receive that award. Excellent. Uh, so how are the house construction going back home in Atlanta? <laughs> it's coming along. We're uh, doing site preparations and uh, we're looking forward to hopefully being moved in there in late 2014. Yeah, and for people who don't know yet, that's like a new headquarters for uh, Porsche North America. But it's not only office, it's going to be something for the consumer and the Porsche enthusiasts, right? Yeah, we'll have a customer experience center there, which is really great because it'll offer the opportunity for dealers or you know interested customers to fly in. It's right next to the Atlanta Hartsfield Airport. And they can come in and sample a variety of different models and different options. And maybe if they want to spec out a car, it's a great place to start because they can see a lot of different things that the dealer might not offer and be able to offer them a chance to drive and make a more informed decision about their car. Okay, great. So uh, does Porsche have something in the, in the books uh, for next year for the Performance Car of the Year work? <laughs> well, you know, that's kind of what we do. So uh, I'm sure we'll have something that will be eligible. Uh, we haven't introduced everything yet this year, so, uh, so stay tuned. Great, excellent. Thank you again, Dick, and we'll talk uh, soon. My pleasure. Thank you. Y de un super auto vamos a otro super auto. La única sorpresa en realidad que vimos allá en el auto show de Nueva York, el nuevo Camaro Z28. Un auto que, como van a escuchar con el ingeniero Darren Bourne, es un auto perfectamente legal para andar por la calle, pero realmente es un auto eh, diseñado para correrlo en la pista. Imagínense que el aire acondicionado es opcional. Es una cosa que le pueden colocar o no al auto, así que vamos a escuchar los detalles del nuevo Camaro Z28 2014. So you're one of the top engineers from uh, General Motors, uh, and you have a beautiful surprise here at the Outer Star New York. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the Z28 is just incredible. It's been great to bring this out and show everybody today what a uh, just awesome, awesome car this is. You know, it's just an absolute dream. I mean, like, the Camaro already was, like, the, uh, the LMC was doing really well, but this is, like, different level right in every aspect yeah you know the zl1's a great car we've got the one le car you know the ss you know with the newly refreshed front and rear ends uh, you know we've got a great lineup here for 2014 
but the Z28 is just going to be over the top. You know, they uh, you got the great carbon ceramic brakes, you got the LS7 engine, you got the uh, MM6 transmission. This thing's just going to be an incredible track animal. What's the uh, powertrain? What's uh, the engine? What's the output? The engine's an LS7. It'll be right around 500 horsepower. Yeah. And this car is much more lighter than the other one. Is there any other difference in that? Yeah, thing? correct. We went after this doing a um, focus mass reduction, bringing the car down. We brought about 100 pounds out of it over an SS, and that's about 300 pounds better than a ZL1. So it really uh, makes it feel very nimble on the track, allows you to carry a little more speed through the corners, you get to brake later. It, it's absolutely a, just an incredible dream to drive this C28. Yeah, but obviously this is not a day-to-day -day car. I mean, this is a car thought to be driven under a racetrack, right? Yeah, you know, I mean, this car is all set up. You could drive it on every day as your daily driver. There, I'm sure there will be people that will, and there's going to be a lot of them that are going to be very focused on, you know, it's, it's going to go to the track on the weekends, and... Uh, you know, it's going to just deliver to everybody. So when was the last time that there was a C28 in production? Uh, 2002 was the end of okay. the 28 when we stopped the so, uh, prior generation Camaro. A little bit of a, more than a decade after that, so you have this. And is this going to be a limited production car? You know, we aren't specifically limiting the production, but you know, with uh, you know, the exciting... Whoever wants it, we'll get it, yeah, right? You know, we'll, if you want one, we'll build your one. It's going to be really exciting. Uh, do you know anything about the like, sales uh, date or anything like that? Or it's already in production? We'll be able to get it the spring of 2014. Oh. Oh, okay. And pricing, I guess, closer to that? Yeah, you know, pricing officially hasn't been announced yet, but when you look, we've got the great carbon ceramic brakes, the LS7 engine, you know, a lot of really top-notch school valve bampers. That's a new thing for us. You know, it's going to be a top-notch car. You can expect pricing will be north of a ZL1. Well, congratulations on that production uh, car, but also you being a... Uh yeah, Chevrolet Racing has been doing great in every series. NASCAR, Indy, everywhere. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Chevy's just got, you know, such a great performance edge here. You know, we've got the SS, we've got our IndyCar program, and, you know, now to bring the Z28, just, you know, putting that back on the road is just going to be incredible. Excellent. Thank you very much, Darren, for your time, and congratulations again. All right, thank, thank you very you. much. Bye. No se vayan, esto es Auto 060. Yo soy Javier Mota.